بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سال اور خان یوٹیوب چینل ویٹ ٹوڈے کنٹینیو دی ڈسکشن فرام دی پریویس ویڈیو وی سی واٹ دی ریورس بریک ڈاؤن میکینزم وی سی دی ریورس بریک ڈاؤن آف ڈائیوڈ Uh, and in the previous video, I told you what is a breakdown. It is the rapid increase in the reverse current in a direction opposite to the forward current. And that happens when, when you increase the reverse bias potential to a certain point. So this is that point. This is your breakdown voltage VB V. Fine. So this is our, this, this video. The discussion is going to be on this breakdown voltage. Not on the breakdown voltage, but on the phenomenon. One thing I missed in the previous video is the peak inverse voltage or the peak inverse rating. So please write it down. It's the peak inverse rating. It's most probably called and then it's called the peak reverse rating. So I'll, I'll write it in the bracket peak inverse rating or it's called the peak reverse rating, PRV. So what is this? This is basically the maximum voltage. So I will write it down myself over here is the maximum voltage that can be applied a diode before entering the breakdown region and I believe it's clear so this is a very important thing the peak inverse rating the peak reverse rating the peak inverse voltage it's a very important thing you need to know because we do not want to operate our diode in the breakdown region over there it cannot work we have special diode that will work over there zener diode we'll see it when the time comes the maximum voltage, of course, the reverse bias voltage that can be applied to a diode before entering into the breakdown region, which means if this is your breakdown voltage, so somewhere over here, you have your peak inverse rating, PIV rate. Fine. Yes. Have a look for the PN junction diode. The majority carriers on the P side are holes on the N side are electrons. We are interested in the minority carriers. Why? Because we are talking about the reverse biasing. We are talking about the reverse bias potential. So the minority charge carriers are what? So we have on the P side, we have on the N side. So on the P side, they are electrons. On the N side, they are holes. Have a look, please. What happens is, you apply a reverse bias potential, which means P is connected to the negative side, N is connected to the positive side. The width of the depletion region increases. Width of the depletion region increases, which means what? That the electric field becomes stronger. Electric field becomes stronger. And you increase the, 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 the reverse bias voltage to such a level that the depletion region increases in such a weight that the electric field increases to such a level that it pushes the holes from this side to this side and the electrons are attracted from N side to D, from P side to the N side. Yes, so you have an increase of the minority current. The electric field is directed where? Over here. So which means it would repel the electrons from N to P and it would attract, sorry, this would repel the holes from N to P. It would uh, attract the electrons from P to N. Isn't it like this? It is. 
the if if I write it mathematically so I've written it over here the width of the depletion region of course is directly proportional to the to the applied voltage across the diode and over here if you're talking about the reverse bias so actually it's equal to 1 over 2 power as well we have a 1 over 2 power as well over here previously we did not talk about the 1 over 2 because we're not interested in that sort of a detail we just want to see that with an increase this increases not in the proper ratio we're not interested in that so this is that proper ratio directly proportional to v r to the power 1 over 2 so which means that if we diode in the reverse bias of course we're talking about the reverse bias so if this increases this would imply that the width of the depletion region would increase and if this width of the depletion region increases this means that the electric field would become stronger and i could say that this would increase the strength of the electric field would increase now you know very well that an electric field applies a force on a charge carrier so electric field applies force on charges and and that is given by what f is equal to qe that force is given by q times e yes you know this very well now after this what happens so if the electric field has increased this implies what that if the electric field has increased so this would imply that the force will increase on the charge carriers and of course over here we're talking about the minority charge carriers after this what happens so after this what happens is that holes and electrons in the reverse bias region in the minority we're talking about so the electrons would move from p to n side and the holes would move from n to p side this i've already told you but let me write it over here as well that the electrons would go from the p to n side and the holes they would go from n to p side fine yes now what happens the velocity and the kinetic energy would also increase due to the force if the force is increasing and if they are moving so they will move with a higher velocity yes so the velocity and and if the velocity increases so the kinetic energy will increase of the charge carriers and they would do what they would further knock off more electrons from the valence band they will make more free electrons knock off electrons you could say bonded electrons yes and those bonded electrons will then further knock off more electrons and over here and we'll have a rapid increase of current and this is called the avalanche effect how does this happen you have an electron that has already gained this energy this everything that we talked about the force was applied it gained the energy so it came to an atom you have an atom you have an electron it had an energy it knocked off this electron now we have got two electrons now these two would would would, would go on to knock off more electrons let's say we have an electron over here in an atom right so now it, if it knocks it off so we have got a total of four electrons right now these four would then go to knock off more four so then we would have eight electrons and this process would go and go and we would have uh, an uh, this this ionization process would go on and on and what would we have we would have a number of the uh, electrons would increase the number of the electrons would increase and which means that the current through the diode will increase and of course we're talking about the minority charge carriers in this case so the current in the diode in this case is the reverse current so and the reverse current has increased rapidly after some proper breakdown voltage this process is called an avalanche effect 
avalanche effect. Now why is this called an avalanche effect and you know what is an avalanche the number are increasing and increasing and increasing and you have a greater number moving at a higher speed that's why this is called an avalanche effect. You know what an avalanche is right avalanche is the melting of snow and the, the, the glaciers and when it comes down in the form of a storm it's called avalanche and that is why this is also called an avalanche effect. This was the whole reverse breakdown mechanism. In the reverse breakdown mechanism, one we have is this avalanche effect. The other that we have is a Zener effect also. So I have some details of the Zener effect over here as well. Uh, I will show you. The thing is, the thing is, the major difference is that in the Zener uh, breakdown, this was if let's say the avalanche breakdown. So then if you have your Zener breakdown, So in the Zener breakdown, first of all, you have a highly doped, a highly doped PN junction diode. So first at this point, you write it down, you have a high level of doping. High level of doping. And in that case, when you have high level of doping, so you represent this by a P plus and an N plus, the material, which you normally represent a PN, right? So over there, you represent it by a P, a P plus and N plus. So if the doping is high, so what would happen? You would have a high electric field, I believe. Right? If the doping is high, you have a higher number. So you would have a The width of the depletion region would be less first of all. First of all, the width of the depletion region would be less. High level of doping would imply that the width of the depletion region is less. And I, I, I believe that you are understanding this point. So if the width of the depletion region is less, which means the electric field could not be that sort of stronger, you could say. But in the fact, the reverse bias potential is applied. So this is plus and this is minus anyways. So if you don't have this electric field as well, this positive and this negative would repel this hole toward this side, attract this hole toward this side. You again have the same minority charge carrier movement. You have a greater charge uh, movement and that is due to the minority charge carrier again. Uh, and, and in this case, the Zener breakdown case, this process of the movement of the, uh, the, the minority charge carrier, this is called tunneling. This is called tunneling. Be because these are the charge carriers are moving directly through the, through the what? Through the barrier. Is that fine till here? It is. Now uh, we have another point. Uh, and what is that point? That is that the Zener potential, the breakdown potential in the Zener effect is less than in the avalanche effect. So this is an important point. Let me write it over here that V Zener is less than V avalanche. And why is that? So most probably you understood the reason that is because the weight of the depletion region. breakdown would be achieved earlier and we have another point in the about the temperature coefficient as well first of all you know it, uh, from the energy band theory I told you over there that we have a valence band we have a conduction band in between we have an energy gap so to make an electron free from the valence band to shift it to the conduction band you need to give it an energy equal to the forbidden energy gap fine yes the temperature effect the temperature has got an effect on it that if the temperature would increase of course the energy would increase so the energy gap required would decrease why because the attained energy of the electron has increased right so this is the effect so the electron can easily become free background is easy right that when as if I would write it over here that eg decreases as temperature increases so what would be the effect electron can easily become free 
I would write over here electron is equal to free and I will write in the bracket easily. Electron can easily become free which means that breakdown is equal to easy. If the electrons are becoming free so this, this thing is what? This thing is breakdown right? So breakdown is easy. And if the breakdown is easy this is called what? This is, this is called negative temperature coefficient. This is said that the material has a negative temperature coefficient. And one negative temperature coefficient definition I've already told you previously about the resistance. Which means you have to apply less voltage to achieve the breakdown. You have to apply less voltage to achieve the breakdown. I will write it over here. Apply less voltage to achieve breakdown of course reverse bias voltage this is one point this is for the avalanche breakdown this is for the avalanche breakdown similarly when the temperature increases the vibration of the atoms would increase this is case number one case number two is that if you have the temperature increase this would imply that the vibration increase and if the vibration increases this means that the collision increases and if the collision increases this means that the time for which the electrons travel this would decrease time of electron travel would decrease right so if this decreases this means what that the kinetic energy is decreasing the overall speed is decreasing the kinetic energy is decreasing so the ionization process is decreasing which means the breakdown voltage is not being achieved the breakdown region the, is not being entered right so which means what this is called a positive temperature coefficient this one is called a positive temperature coefficient that what do you have to do that you have to apply a higher voltage you have to apply a higher voltage to achieve breakdown you have to apply a higher voltage to achieve the breakdown. This is the case of the avalanche breakdown. I believe I said it previously that this is avalanche breakdown. So I would write it. I would write it that this case that I written number two. Number two is avalanche breakdown. And number one that I have written that is your Zener breakdown the overall concept is basically the same but the difference is of the temperature coefficients you could say the main idea is that of ionization the force the electric field the external electric field the same is the push the same is the pull it's the minority carrier current, the reverse saturated current is due to the minority charge carriers. When we have the effect of temperature, we've already we've also discussed that. So we you could say that the reverse breakdown of a diode is basically of two types. You could say it like this as well. I think I've got a certain threshold over here. Uh, when it's less than four volts, you have a Zener effect breakdown voltage is less than 4 volts right so I would write it over here with a black color that in the Zener effect you you, you, you basically have your uh, V breakdown voltage is less than 4 volts and over here in the avalanche breakdown your breakdown voltage is greater than 6 volts generally 
I believe I finished this video over here. I'm feeling a little tired. I'll take a little break and then I'll be back with the effect of temperature video. So maybe I put this effect first after the VI characteristics or maybe I put this so I don't know the order but anyways I'll record it after this. So I hope this is clear. I have not read out any points from the book. If you have any questions the comment section is for you guys. See you in the next video. Goodbye.